Well, how many had a good Thanksgiving? How many gave thanks? <laughs> yes. Well, my the title of my sermon is Thanksgiving's Not Over. <laughs> Thanksgiving is not over. And we say, well, yes, it is. Well, the day is uh, on which we set, a, set aside to celebrate. And um, it's important that um, I think we realize that in our church and in our faith, Thanksgiving is uh, something that is continual. It's ongoing. Now, the difference between praise and thanks, okay? You know, whenever we, in the scripture that I have today is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So whenever we think about, well, that's a praise, but I'm, this is Thanksgiving is not over. Well, let's, let's look at the definitions. Praise means to express a warm approval. When you praise someone, you are giving them approval of, wow, that was a really good job. That was really, those were really good songs. That was nice. Uh, what a beautiful voice you have. What, you know, that was a good accomplishment. We give approval or admiration. Thanks is to express gratitude. I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you sang. I'm thankful that you came. So whenever we think about praise and thanks, we use them interchangeably. Um, one of the, um, th- one of the uh, definitions for, uh, for thank, to be or to t- just the word thank, is to assign responsibility. <laughs> assign responsibility. Thank you. I'm assigning responsibility to you for that action. So whenever we are giving thanks... We are assigning responsibility to God for the action of blessing. And we are also doing it with approval that I am grateful that you have blessed me. So in everything give thanks, meaning that somehow in in my life I am thankful and give approval to God that he is with me, that he is seeing me through this day, that he is seeing me through... um, the, you know, the holidays and, you know, making a plans for the, the next one and, you know, all the different things. So praise be to God. Praise be to God. We express warm approval. I am expressing warm approval. Praise be to God. Hmm. So I th- whenever we start out our day with praise, we are... We are, we are expressing to God an approval of his presence and of his purpose for our life. So praise you, God. Thank you, God, for this day. So we're giving gratitude and responsibility. God is going to do wondrous things in my life. I praise him and I give approval of it. I give approval to God to do wondrous things in my life. Wow, just imagine, how can, that, how can that be? I give approval to God. So whenever we start out with praise and thanksgiving, we are giving approval and assigning responsibility to God to bring this into our life. Now, whenever we uh, look at life, often we look at, well, I don't have, you know, we look at what we don't have. Uh, and the reason that, we do this is especially in our society you look at the advertisements on television what are they advertising they are advertising what they want you to know you don't have and that you're going to be happier if you get it <laughs> see you know, that's an, that's an advertisement they want to present something to you so that you know that you need this so, and you won't be happy until you get it. Well, once you get it, you're not happy. Then you think, well, I didn't buy the right thing. <laughs> so you've got to go out and buy another thing. Yeah. But that's a whole scheme or the whole idea behind the advertisement, be, that you are, um, you're not really complete until you have, you wear this clothes, buy this car, live this house, live in this place, you know, 
many years ago, they used to have that beer commercial that uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere and you drink this beer and all these women appear out of the, out of the heavens, you know. It's like all you got to do is drink this beer and you got it made, you know. The, it's, I think they got rid of it because the women were upset with that, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, it was just like if you drink this, if you have this, if you go there and, you know. God is telling us that we are to be thankful and that we are to praise him. So we are to express gratitude and we are to express approval. Praise is expressing approval for God to bless. Now, as you read this verse, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are expressing our uh, praise and our thanks to, a, to this specific one. Okay, we're expressing our praise and our thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to make sure that we understand this. This is not energy. This is not to the universe. This is to the person, the, the, you know, the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Son came and died for our sins. He rose from the dead and he ever lives to make intercession for us. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. So whenever we are giving praise and we are expressing approval, we are wanting God to bless our life with, you know, we are saying, praise be to God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. This one, this next section of this verse is so very important. Who has blessed us. It's past tense. So the, the, the idea is, and if you think about this, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. The blood of Christ purchased our salvation. So our sins were forgiven at the cross. But we needed to receive that forgiveness into our life. So we are taking something that was already done and receiving it into our life in the present. God has saved us, past tense, from our sin. Now there are some people who say, God hasn't saved me, and they they don't want to have forgiveness because they don't believe in God. They've taken their belief and used it in what we would say disbelief. So they have tried to nullify the work that Christ has done in their life. They're saying, God hasn't saved me. He is not real. He doesn't, you know, that's just a figment or weakness or whatever they use, you know, to to declare. It's like one one author uh, wrote and he said that, I don't have have enough faith to be an atheist. (laughs) I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, you know. To, to believe that God doesn't exist is to refute, you know, <laughs> evidence for thousands of years through Jewish history, through the, the you know, in the, the church age, in the beginning of Christ, when Christ was here and, you know, the miracles. You know, it isn't just something that's in the Bible. It is written in history. It's written in the history books about Christ and and that he was a a prophet and he was a teacher, you know, not just the scriptures, but in other writings that they found at that time. You know, Jesus is a real person who was here. And, you know, they wrote about him, but they didn't write, as it were, in the text of the scripture. They wrote it in the text of a kind of a historical person. So we know that Jesus has come and that he died for our sins, he rose from the dead. Because he lives, he ever lives to make intercession for us, because he lives, we shall live also. So whenever we are praising, we are expressing approval to God for forgiving us. Thank you, God, for saving me from my sins. That's an approval. Thank thank you, God. I thank you. That's an approval, (laughs) you know. We don't miss our sin, you know, where our sin is that which is destroying. And but the, the idea is that God has given us um, his, his salvation. So we express approval and 
being thankful is I am grateful. I approve of your forgiveness and I am grateful that 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 sin no longer is part of my life. Hmm. So then we move on that he has blessed us. Blessed. Now, there's a... Something somewhere I have in my notes about blessed. Um, What do you think of when you think of being blessed? You know, what is being blessed? Having good? Having um, benefits? Having um, strength whenever we are weak? having hope whenever we feel hopeless. You see, the blessing of God is something that He bestows upon us. And it says here in this, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So somewhere in in all of this, and I won't try and find it, and I'll just kind of present it, (laughs) that in the spiritual realm, In the spiritual realm, God has conquered the devil. Okay? In the spiritual realm, there is no death. In the spiritual realm, there is hope, understanding, peace. In the spiritual realm, God has given to us every spiritual, every blessing, every spiritual gift is ours. Now, Every blessing that resides in Jesus Christ is ours. Now, how many remember last week's sermon? Where's Kira? Is she going downstairs? There you are. Come down here, my dear. I, I, did, did you think of this this week? Those of you who saw this sermon last week, did you think of this? Huh? I thought of it over and over and over again. Now, remember, when we think about, you know... Uh, and, and the Bible says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just, forgive us of our sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So we've all, I, ha, I have always thought of that Christ's forgiveness is a gift. All right? So God has forgiven us of our sins. It is a gift. Okay? And that's true. It is a gift. But it is more than just a gift to our hearts. Have you thought of this this week? Yeah, okay. She has to. She's up here. She has to. Oh, yes, Pastor. I love that. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I love getting my hair messed up. But I thought of, you know, how that we are covered. Get your hair messed up. That's fine with you. But whenever we enter into Christ in your lesson this morning by grace, in the grace of Christ I stand. In God's covering, I stand. That, that I am at one with Christ and one with me. Now, I, I was also thinking of in the context of how that we are uh, of the vine and the branches, Jesus says. I am the vine, you are the branches. So here we are receiving strength from the vine. Christ is the vine. He has forgiven us. Every spiritual blessing is in Christ. Every one, every spiritual gift is in Christ. Now, here I am in Christ. The covering represents Christ. And I am in Him. There is neither li- there's neither life nor death, principalities nor powers, things present, things past, things to come that can ever take this off of me, separate me from Him. The trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ will rise. Why? Because we're in Christ. So every spiritual blessing belongs to us. And now it says in this verse that Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realm in every spiritual blessing in Christ. He has already blessed us. So here I am in covered with God's blessing. <laughs> I am covered with God's blessing. That means I have provision. What do we need? What do we need in our life? What is it that we need from God? Do I need healing? I'm covered. You know, sometimes the insurance companies you're in good hands with, 
Well, God has us covered. So every promise that is, a, you know, every spiritual promise, that God that in Christ. So if we see ourselves as Christ is the vine, we are the branches, we grow out of this. But we're never separated from it. The fruit that I bear in my life grows out of this and we're never separated from it. I'm covered always. I am covered everywhere I go. Every thought I have, every place I touch, every place I walk, got you covered. <laughs> You're covered. Nothing, did, we, did you, I mean, I, I, I just like, Almost everything now I've tried. Oh, yeah, I'm covered. I'm covered. What do you need? My book, you know? I'm, you got you covered here, you know? It's all okay. I got you covered here. Now, this is what's, you know, it's going to happen. What are you praying for? Pray for the ble- pray, pray for the best. Pray for the, the blessing. What do we pray for in our lives? If we're sick, we pray for healing. Why? God has us covered. By His stripes, we are healed. Got you covered. Well, what about my sins? That they are covered at the cross. I'm washed and I'm clean. Well, what about my future? Doesn't matter. God got you covered. Nothing in this present life or the life to come can separate us from Him because He got you covered. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And, and we think about this and we say, well, I, I'm not covered. Well, why not? Well, I don't feel covered. Well, ask Christ into your life. Well, I've done that. Then you're covered. If Christ is in your heart, you're covered. Why well, don't feel that way? It doesn't matter what your feelings are. This is a fact. <laughs> there is an acorn that grows an oak tree. Right? Acorns go to oaks. Right? Ah, okay, just want to make sure I was doing the right thing. There's, an a- there's a tree in this acorn. Oh, no, there ain't. It's just, a, it's just a little nut. Well, I got a little nut here, and there's a big tree in it. That's humor. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> He's feeling better. So, that, I mean, that's two weeks in a row, same illustration. May even use it next week. I don't know. Who knows? But we get the idea of how important this is. You're covered. Well, what about the bad things? What about the. Got you covered. Well, it still hurts. Got you covered. I'm still in need. Got you covered. Well, what about? Got you covered. <laughs> Amen. All right. So you can go sit down. I'll call you back later. <laughs> so we see that. We see that in James it says. So, my dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. Every desire. This is James chapter 1, verse 16. I don't think I gave it to you, Terry. Uh, (laughs) I got a whole bunch of stuff I wrote after I sent Terry the information. But every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There's nothing deceitful in God. There's nothing two-faced. There's nothing fickle. He brought us to life using His true Word. You see, it is the Word that creates in us life. The, Jesus, whenever He created us, we were created. God just didn't speak to us. He breathed life into us. He formed us out of the dust of the earth and He, and he, uh, spoke, and he, he, he breathed life into us. The whole world He spoke into existence, but you and I, He created. All right? Now, every spiritual blessing, is some, His Word comes and speaks life to us. So we're receiving His Word into us and His Word is bringing life into our being, showing us off as the crown of all His creatures. Of all of His creation, 
You're his crown. Now, as the crown of God's creation, he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings with all spiritual gifts so that whatever you have need of in your life, God's provision is there because you are in him and he is in you. What do we need? Comfort, peace, healing, restoration, strength, provision, Love, forgiveness, blessing. You are the crown of his creation. And he says he will withhold no good thing from you. (laughs) You are the crown of his creation and he will withhold no good thing from you. Now let's start thinking about... Now, and the purpose of all of this is that he he blesses us what is it here found wanting uh, there's there's a, I have all these scriptures and try to put them in and highlight where they're at so that I can bring them up immediately and say here they are well I can't do that uh, <laughs> but God has given us we are the crown of his creation he will ha- he will withhold no good thing from us and that we are okay I think of it think of it this way we're God's billboard. <laughs> Drive down the road. Okay, we've been driving on down the road, and you see the billboards. What's on a billboard? Well, someone's trying to get to us, get us a message. All right? They're trying to get us to read this sign as we're traveling down the road, and, and it's not a little sign. It's a big sign because you're going 60, 70 miles an hour, and they want you to be able to read this sign and get everything that's in it. It's not like there's a whole paragraph. There's just three or four words that are going to catch your attention that you will read it, you'll see the picture, and you'll, you know, they all have a picture. Almost all of them have a picture. And then they have words. You're the billboard for God. When people look at you, they see your picture. <laughs> they see you. And then there's a few words that go beside you. And unfortunately, we don't write those words they're written for us. We would like them. We would like to write them, but you see, our character puts them up there. <laughs> when people see us, they think certain things. Now, there are certain people who don't like God, and every time they see you, they see Christ, and they're angry. So they will write, you know, like when Jesus was here, when Jesus walked the face of the earth, his his um, th- those who were against him, they hated him. They, they mocked him. They beat him. So there's the face of Jesus on a billboard and those people who the Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and there were those individuals who saw Jesus and said, we've got to crucify him and Lazarus. We've got to kill them both. So you see, everything that people write about you isn't always true. That's why we've got to have the truth in our heart, knowing that we are covered and that our failures, God has it covered. Our mistakes, the things we wish we had done, God's got you covered. Well, so let's go on. Now, he has blessed us in the heavenly realms in every spiritual blessing. So blessings are coming into our lives And that these blessings have already been prepared for us to have. I, I, you know, I, from from our perspective, you know, our human intellect and so on, it's hard for us to imagine that uh, things are prepared for us and we just need to go pick them up. (laughs) You know, it's like that... um, story I used, and I've used it a couple of times, but um, the guy goes to heaven and, uh, God, and God is taking him into this big warehouse. And in this big warehouse, there are all these boxes and people's names on it. 
And he, and he, he says to, to God, well, what are all these boxes with people's names on? He says, well, these are blessings that I had stored up for, set aside for people, but they never, they never, they never claimed them. They never received them in their life. And then he said to God, well, where's, where's my box? And he took him to his box and he opened it up and there were all these things that God had provided for him for those specific times in his life and he never asked God for them. He didn't open his life to be receptive of them. And I think of it as God's provision. I think we've messed ourselves up in our spiritual understanding. We somehow make God in our own image. And we make God after our own thoughts and our own likeness, as if, as if God were, you know, well, we, I certainly wouldn't, you know, I, I would wait until you do something good before, you know, I'd wait until your birthday before I make you a birthday cake, you know. <laughs> I would wait until you do something good before I reward you. And God is, but see, God isn't waiting for us. He's already prepared all these blessings for us and they're already, they're already there. You know, faith, faith is bringing into, uh, you know, I heard this years ago and, and I kind of had a grasp of it, but again, faith is believing for something that, it, that exists in the spiritual realm that brings it into the physical realm. I believe. What are we believing for? We'll say we're believing for healing. Well, in Christ is our healing, and we pray for that to come into our own life, okay? Well, what about provision? What about finances? What about, you know, daily stuff? <laughs> well, God wants us to call upon him. He, he's the one who helps us in our understanding. He's the one who helps us and, and, and brings joy to our heart. Joy is that which resides in the heart. Happiness depends upon happenings. So and, and that I am aware of God's presence and I'm aware of God's provision and so I am thankful. I express gratitude to God for what he is doing and I praise him because it is a warm approval of God. I, I approve of what you're doing. Hmm. So when things are not going right, we offer praise and we say, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. That's what praise means. So now we may not feel blessed. We may not look blessed. And in fact, all of the circumstances may tell us you're not blessed. <laughs> but we've got to be bold enough to say, I see it right here in God's word. I am blessed. I am blessed. You know, if we had pictures of people in Cuba or Central America or in Africa, and you look at those children, they, they, they're dying by the thousands from starvation. And, you know, we're blessed. We live in a blessed country. Our families are blessed. We have more than enough. We have more than what we could ever imagine. And those individuals, you know, have no concept of, Food in a grocery store. You know, food on the table. They have only bowls of rice, maybe. <laughs> and they're starving to death. So, you see, blessing is not only recognizing the provision that God has given us in our society that we live, but also in a, in a, in a realm in which God is providing for our soul. That in this life, we will have tribulation. In this life, we will have trials. But I am in Christ. I am more than a conqueror in Christ. That nothing shall be able to separate us from Christ. Are we getting the picture? Go like this. Okay, good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, I am in Him. Hebrews says... Uh, Hebrews chapter 8 says, um, But Jesus, his priestly work far surpasses what these uh, other priests do, since he's working from a far better plan. So this is talking about Israel in the past and how that the old covenant was there. In the first plan, in the first covenant, 
the old covenant had worked out, if it had worked, the second one wouldn't be needed. But we know the first was found wanting because God said, heads up, the days are coming when I'll set up a new plan for dealing with Israel and Judas, Judah. I will throw out the old plan. I'll set up, I'll set up with their ancestors when I led them uh, out of, uh, by the hand of Egypt, out of, the, out of Egypt. They don't keep their part of the bargain, so I looked away and let it go. This new plan, okay, this is where we're looking at ourselves. This new plan I'm making with Israel isn't going to be written on paper, isn't going to be chiseled in stone. This time I'm writing it out, I'm writing out the plan in them carving it on the lining of their hearts. I'll be their God, they'll be my people. You see, we are in Christ. He is writing, he has written his word upon our heart. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we are, we are people of the heart, we are people of the conscience, we are people of the spirit, where we find, where we allow the spirit of God to... to touch our lives in a very real way. And, and we don't have this imaginary being somewhere that, you know, throws presents under a tree. <laughs> we, have this, we have this person who is living in our hearts and lives and we are living in him and he in us. Um, and it goes on to say, they won't go to school to learn about me or buy, uh, or buy a book called God in Five Easy Lessons. <laughs> um, They'll all get to know me firsthand. Firsthand. Jesus is introduced to us as our Savior, our friend. The little and the big, the small and the great, they'll get to know me by being kindly forgiven. With the slate of their sins forever wiped clean. <laughs> kindly forgiven. You see, we're not beaten into submission. We're not beaten for our sins. We are forgiven of our sins. And it is a new life that Christ has, has spoken in us. It's a new life that he has given to us in Christ. So, so what does it mean to be blessed? It means that you are supernaturally empowered to do whatever God has called you to do. I am blessed with all spiritual blessing. You see, God has blessed us, has blessed us. This is the part I was looking for whenever we began, and I'll, cl I'll close with it. What does it mean? It means that you are supernaturally empowered. I am blessed. I am supernaturally empowered by God to do whatever God has called me to do. So what are we doing? How are we living? What are we doing? That's what you're called to do. You're called to do this. It's, it's something God has opened the door for you. You are called and you are supernaturally empowered to do this. You see, if we walk around in our life, in our daily life, and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing this on my own. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get to be supernaturally empowered. No. You are supernaturally empowered because you are in Christ. Come on down here. One more time. We're, we're at the closing. <laughs> it's almost over. <laughs> we, are, we are in Christ. So you see, you are supernaturally empowered. Why? Because you are in Christ. You're covered. Well, what do I have to do to be this? What do I have to do to be this supernaturally empowered person? Ask for forgiveness. <laughs> You're in Him. You're already there. Well, what do I need? Ask Him. Well, what about what am I doing? Live for Him. Where am I going? Walk with Him. <laughs> you see, you are already there. Your job. You don't have to be somebody else. Be who you are in Christ. You're already covered. So, to be whomever God has called you to be and to have whatever God has called you to have you see, God has called us to have things in our life. All spiritual blessings already. So receiving what God has already put out there, 
Well, what is it? Well, you know, sometimes we have to dream and we have to ask. And you'll know because God will bring it into your life. You'll pray for those things. God's blessing is his empowerment. His blessing to our life is his empowerment. You are empowered. Why? Because you are covered. (laughs) You are empowered because you are covered. We we would say, well, I'm empowered if I, if I what? (laughs) Be your covered. I am blessed. Why? Because you're covered. So it's okay to ask. Well, what if I don't get? That's okay. (laughs) You'll know that that's not part of what you're supposed to have. But you can still ask and see what God has blessed you with. Amen? Let's all stand. (laughs) The key, I have this highlighted right down here. See See, it? It says the key. What does it say right there? The key. You have to believe. That means believe that you are forgiven, believe that you are covered, and receive it into your life. Amen? So we believe it. Amen? We receive it. Amen? And it belongs to us. Amen? By God's grace and mercy. I am covered by His grace. Amen. Amen. So be it, Lord. You're dismissed. (laughs) That's it. I'm covered. Thank you.